shot, here we go. Boom. Wait! A big dirty mullet. Yes, 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 yes. Doggies. Welcome back to another video. Hey, you know when you're letting your tires down that you're in for a bloody treat and that's what we're doing right now I'm bagging these tires down to probably we're gonna bag them down to about 20 a little bit more to go on that thing about 20 psi and then We're going on one hell of an adventure. Oh, man There is no bloody better feeling than letting the tires down on your 4 and going into the unknown. That is exactly what we're doing right now. It's just you, me, and the troopy. We're on a solo camping mission. We've got limited food. There's actually a couple of old snags in the fridge, so might make a little cheeky sausage sizzle over the fire. But right now, we're in a place that I've never been before. We're exploring some, uh, this is like fully off grid. I've heard once you hit the beach up here, it turns super soft very dangerous you're driving on like a 30 degree angle like that and a lot of cars have like slid down into the ocean and they've just been engulfed by the ocean so we are fighting the elements while we're out here we've got a massive swell that over there is supposed to be forecast for rain coming in and it's a disgusting 20 about a 20 knot southerly wind so we are fighting the elements but the end goal what, what we need to do at the end of this video is land a mulloway 20 kilo 15 kilo big silver ghost we're going to pull a 15 kilo fish out of one of these gutters that's the plan anyway but anything could happen so buckle up this is going to be a bloody fun one i am absolutely frothing for it so with a little bit of a drive that way hit the sand and then um I suppose we start looking for fishing holes this is going to be absolutely bloody amazing Pretty much what you see is what I see. There are no tracks to follow. There's um, nothing really. I'm just trying to stay on this sort of harder stuff like this. It gets really soft over there. But we'll come to the top of this um, crest here. We'll have a look. How's the old troopy, eh? She just crawls up this stuff, mate. Well, this is where we are right now and it's uh, looking pretty bloody good. Literally in the middle of nowhere. Trying to get down onto the coast, but it's a big, this is like rocky cliff all the way down there. We just have to keep punching along, we'll make our tracks. That way, we're heading south, we want to head that way, that's where I'm reckon. Look at the size of the swell, I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera. <laughs> but it's a massive swell. That's not good. <laughs> have a go at this. Alright, we've made our way down to the coast. And um, this is hectic, this is unfishable right now. How soft is this gonna be? Oh, this is so good. All right, we're about to enter the beach that you guys can probably see down there. That's the beach behind me. And um, it is a wild, wild, gnarly looking ocean right now. Man, there's this like sense, there's this incredible sense of like freedom. I don't even know what you'd call it, but like when you do these things by yourself, like if I got bogged right now, I don't know one pulling me out. We've got a winch, we've got four max tracks. We'll be able to get out of anything, but there's just this sense of freedom when you do these kind of adventures by yourself. Have a look at this. This is a wild, wild ocean right now. That is a massive shore break. That's huge right there. There's no way we're fishing that. She's bloody windy, she's rough. We've got a big drive along this beach. into a couple of dilemmas. This whole entire coastline has just been eroded away by the swell and um, might be in a little bit of a pickle here, doggies, because what I've done, I've driven the troop and you can see this here. So this here is just completely eroded away. That's probably about, I don't know, three, four meter drop. The swell is just coming in, just eating that sand dune away. And this track that I've put a sort of forged, is just ended, it just ends right there. And you can't get down, you can't jump around there. Super, it's like you'd never make it in the car. So somehow we've got to do a three point turn here, punch all the way back up from where I come from, try to find an inland track, get around this headland and then back onto the beach. I can see the beach is nice and flat way up there. So that's what we're gonna do. This is the joys of it. This is what it's all about. Let's go. Big three point turn here. 
Back that way. just flicking mud up all over me I love it all right so pretty much just like that the plans have changed already so what's happening is that swell is so big it's just eroding the the, the beach away you cannot drive physically drive any vehicle on the beach right now so what it is the beaches they're not wide beaches they're only skinny beaches and that swells pushing right up to the sand dunes and it's just slowly eating those dunes away so what I've had to do is jump on the maps, have a look where I am exactly, and I kind of found this big, long track goes through a big, soggy marshland. So that's where we are right now. You can probably see out the window here, it's just this boggy, soft clay kind of a marshland area. That's what I'm doing. I'm driving through here. I've probably been on this track for about 40 minutes. We are losing, we're missing a heap of beautiful coastline, which is just over there, but physically cannot drive the car on the beach there. So hopefully, once we punch up this way, the beaches open up a little bit more and that swell can't erode the um, beach. But this is still epic, mate. There are kangaroos everywhere. There's blue tongue lizards. It's all happening. I'm getting covered in mud by the bloody mud flicking up. It's a good time. This is what it's all about, the adventure. I've never been on this track before and um, I'm pretty excited to see where it ends up. It goes way, way down the coast. So we'll just keep punching and see where we end up. Check out these big Amy footprints. The big boy, they're heading that way. So that's west, that's where I want to be. I want to be driving on that ocean over there, but this is where we are right now. We're stuck in the middle of this bloody, we're not stuck, but we're just heading through this pretty bloody boggy, soggy, sandy sort of marshland area. If we got stuck out here, ha, see you later. We're going to be pretty stuck, but we've got a winch, we've got max tracks, we should be all right, but let's keep punching that way see what happens hopefully it doesn't turn too muddy up there I can sort of look looks like it's a little bit of watery sloppy stuff but we'll just give it a red hot crack keep going problem it's kind of a big problem but at the same time it's a bloody good problem to have and um, it's the swell the swell so big it is just destroying the coastline like I'll show you what I mean I've just I've just been driving for probably about an hour and a half through that muddy plains trying to find out where I can get to the beach we've just popped up through this we've just made our own little track we've popped up onto the coast we're back on the beach it is a bloody beautiful day so much for rain it's so blue bluebird a little bit of wind but the problem is this, these beaches are just destroyed, man. But if you can see this line, that thing down there is about a two meter drop down and that's all soft, soggy, boggy sand down there. So I can't drive down there. I can only stay on this high line. But the problem is, the further you drive, the, the further you go, it just like sucks in. And it's like, just up there, it's like a meter wide. So there's no way we're gonna be hugging that track. The whole troopy will just fall in on that side. So what we're gonna have to do is keep punching south and hopefully, fingers crossed, it doesn't, this, this ledge here just gets wider and wider. It doesn't suck in because if it does, we're going to be absolutely buggered. But, beautiful day. A little bit of seaweed in the water here. There's a nice little gutter here, actually. See that deep water? That would be really good fishing, except it's full of weed. So, just keep driving up. Who knows what we're going to find. 
But I tell you what, it's bloody good fun. And um, hopefully, all we're going to do is find a little hole with no seaweed. That's where we'll park up and we'll fish all night. But for now, it is just a full-on exploring mission. It's pretty sick, but... All right, let's keep punching up the coast. And hopefully, the... Um, the sand doesn't doesn't go too skinny. We can make it. We can make our own track along this beach, and we'll see if we can get there. But look, it's bloody good to be back on the beach and out of that sloppy mud country. Right, I let's kick her in the guts and see if we can find a fishing spot. Look at it, man! I found the most incredible fishing spot out here. It is a massive deep hole, but it's just covered in. I don't know if you guys can see the beach here, but it's covered in seaweed. And there's just seaweed all in the waves out there. That sucks. I'll remember where this place is. I'll come back on another day, but that's incredible. I think what I'm gonna do now, look, we've been driving, it's 2.15 in the afternoon, so we've been driving for hours. This is, a, this is a drive I've wanted to do for a bloody long time, this mission that I've done up and down the coast. Probably another 40 minutes up the coast here, we're gonna get to a spot which I've fished before. I know there's big fish there. It's all dependent on the seaweed. It's a pretty seaweedy spot, so. Just gonna keep driving up this beach. As soon as we find a spot without seaweed, I'm just gonna lock it in and we're just gonna fish it for the rest of the night. But there is a spot up here and it also backs onto a little creek. So we might be able to get the bow out, shoot some fish. I don't know, we've got about another 40 minutes ahead of us though. And she's getting soggy. She's getting boggy here. It's a pretty good beach to drive on actually. Anyway, let's keep punching on. How good day, sick day. Girl. Making tracks. Oh. Alright, I reckon that we found, I don't know if it's a good spot, but we found a spot. It looks alright, but it's the only spot that's not weeded out. I've literally been driving for about five hours or six hours today, fully just four B missions, like such a sick day. But you can see this cloud cover has just pushed over and um, it's getting on, it's 3.49 in the afternoon, so it's about time to start soaking a couple of baits and then we're gonna fish into the night. But this looks like a pretty good spot. So you've got this epic reef line, which kind of like pu pushes out there, it hugs, sort of hugs the coast here, then it sort of heads out there. There's a big channel of water, which is rushing, gushing water out from in there. And it comes into this sort of a deep pocket here. So this is where we're just gonna soak baits tonight, one rod, two rods, and just see how we go, mate. The only problem is, Again, this ledge, it's just this ledge is the whole way along the coast. And um, having a fire is going to be a little bit iffy because it's actually blowing its tits off. Probably doesn't sound like it, but it is. Maybe we can have a little fire down here. I've got to cook up a couple of snags, mate. All right, well, I'm going to um, get some fishing gear ready, chuck on a couple of tracky pants, chuck on a hoodie, get nice and warm, and we're going to, uh, we're going to pull a big fish out of that little bit of water behind me. That's the plan anyway. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm just gonna set up two different fishing rods. And um, this is the sort of the setup I use for Mulloway. So what's happening right now, the water's pushing over the reef up there and then it's got to exit somewhere. So it's getting pushed down this reef system then it obviously funnels out here behind me and then it gets pushed out to sea there. So that's a big deep hole. There's a lot of water movement. There's a big deep gutter sitting there. That's where I'm gonna be sitting my baits tonight. So what I'm gonna do, but this is usually the rig I use all the time. That's just a 7 0 hook. We're just gonna do a snell, a snell rig on it. So we're just gonna wrap this little fella around here eight, nine, ten times. Doesn't really matter. Sliding through. Oh, and that's one done. Hook one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give this bad boy eight wraps. Back through the hole. And boom. Snip that tag end off. Of course, make sure putting the tag ends in the bin at all times. But that's pretty much the hook setup I use for Molo. I'm not too sure if you guys are going to be able to see that. But that's the setup I use there. So what you do, you put a bit of squid, you put a bit of fish, and it can freely move in the current. And there's nothing going to get tangled up there. And um, usually that's how I have my most luck. A lot of, I know a lot of people up and down here use gang hooks, but they get all twisted and go munted in the current. So um, I'm not using that right now. For our sinkers, two options. I've got a big dirty star sinker. That's the star sinker, pretty much acts like a mini boat anchor. It'll just get wedged in the sand, sand will cover it up. 
should be able to hold the bait, but if that thing slips because the current's so strong out there, they've got something called a sand anchor. Now that there is a sand anchor. So you can imagine your line's hooked up to this section here, that gets dug into the ground and it's like an anchor, but when you give it a good rip or a good pull, these little legs, they snap back and you're, uh, you're able to wind the um, sinker back to the where you're fishing from. But we're gonna start off just with star sinkers. This is for a real extreme current and this place does get crazy with current. So start off with the starries and then we'll go from there. All right, so on the menu for the fish, we have a big dirty mullet. Unfortunately, I didn't get to shoot this one with the bow and arrow. I had to buy it. I hate buying bait. I just, I'm just against buying bait. I love catching it myself. And then this is a massive bag of squid. Well, not a massive bag. I think there's only three squid. Three squid in there from a fishing mission that me and Mac 10 did the other day. So we've got squid and mullet for bait. One rod here, one rod, one rod down there. And pretty much this is the setup I use. Three-way swivel up the top, coming down, 80 pound, monofilament line down to that setup that we just showed you on the camera. And then coming back down here to a big juicy star sinker. And that is pretty much it. This one's gonna get lobbed out. You can see that's a deep hole there. That one's gonna get lobbed out there. That other rod, I'm gonna lob it just in front of that section of reef and that white water. And we're just gonna see how we go, man. I've changed the position of the troopy a little bit so I can um, sit here. This is the office, have a cheeky little beer and um, use this epic table that I just got installed. Look how good it is. All right, so when I cut up a mullet, I do two different styles. One side, I'll do a fillet and I'll just use strip baits like that. So I'll put that whole entire strip bait on that snell rig. Same with this one, that's just another strip bait of the fillet. Then I'll do the other side, I'll leave the bone on and I'll um, do chunks. So that's just a chunk of fish there. One hook goes in the top, one hook goes in the bottom like that. Expose the hooks as much as you possibly can and we'll chunk out, chuck out those big slobs there. But for start off, I'll put out this big strip bait like that. Beautiful thing, we'll just wobble freely in the current nicely with that rig we just made. So start off with mullet and then we'll chuck, chuck on that squid once that sun disappears. It's um, 4.30 right now, so we've got a little bit of time. Have a go at that. <laughs> That's what we just caught, literally first bait out in the water. That is a tailor. It's not a massive tailor, it's about 30, maybe 40 centimeters long. But that is the most incredibly good mulloway bait if you can get them fresh. So we're gonna do the same with this. Slices off it, put it out there, use it as bait. We're gonna upgrade that into a big dirty mulloway. That's the plan, but that was literally first bait out. So I might get a little rod, cast a few lures around and um, have a little bit of fun. That's gnarly. How good, eh? <laughs> I literally just put that bait out and we've got another fish on. So there are fish in the area, we just need to get that big 20, 25 kilo slob of a fish tonight. What's going on here? There he is, look at him. Oh, he just spat the hook. Just lost him. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Because there's so many bloody Taylor out there right now, there's literally so many. So um, what I'm gonna do is, Put the baits away, put a little lure out there, just fish with the lure, see if we can get three or four more. And that's gonna have me sorted for the whole entire night. This is gonna be really fun. Have a look at how incredible this is. We've got a couple of crew over here that have come and joined me. They're sitting in my bloody fishing spot, but that's okay. Have a look at this, we've got a beautiful sunset. I've got one more fish. So now we've got two beautiful bits of bait. That's actually quite a big tailor. So we've got that one and that one. We've got a bag of squid. We've got a couple of mullet in the fridge. So it's gonna be a big night fishing in this gutter. That sun is just about to set right now and it should turn on. Big rain clouds over here. Beautiful, mate. So it's time to get the party started. That sun, it's gone. And um, this, is, this, this is the time the fish come out to feed. So I'm gonna sit back Turn the tunes up, I'm gonna pump the tunes up. Hopefully I can scare these blokes in the background off with some bad music. <laughs> and um, we're gonna get ourselves a big dog on the beach tonight. That's the plan anyway. Next time I see you guys, we'll either have a rod bending or I'll be crying, one of the two. Ow! <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. Right, uh, here's a quick update for you. Um, it's just gone eight o'clock at night. We've got, I've got two more Taylor 
Um, I threw them back because we don't, obviously we don't need any more meat. We've got any more bait. We've got two down there in the bucket. That's more than enough. It just absolutely pissed down with rain, like I'm talking bucketed down with rain. So the troop, you got a nice little wash. So did I. And um, it's pretty cruisy right now. There's not a, lot, not a lot going on except for one thing, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass. And it's those guys down there. See that light in the background there? When they turn that thing onto full beam, it's like pointing straight at my car and I can't see a thing. Like it literally blinds my eyes. So I'm gonna um, get my Spice Scales album out from way, way, way back in the day. I'm gonna turn it up full ball and I'm gonna see if I can scare them away with a little bit of Spice Scales music because um, that light is so annoying. Anyway, apart from that, it's a bloody beautiful night. A little bit of rain, a little bit of wind. We've got two more fish on the board and um sooner or later that big ghost is coming we just gotta wait for that so um let's go field day dj is gonna happen and we're gonna scare these guys out of my fishing spot let's go where's the smoke machine at <laughs> oh my god all right we've got possible we've got possible mulloway attack right now this rod just went absolutely psycho possible mulloway Big head shake, actually really, really bloody big head shakes. Oh my God, look at this thing. Bro, this could be the fish I come for. Time check, 8.23. Oh, it's a good fish, man, real good fish. This is what we come for. Come on, Big Rig. Oh man, he's got his taken line, eh? This is what it's all about, right now. Big silver ghost, please be a big silver ghost. Come on, come on baby, come on baby. Don't do that, don't do that. Oh, this is so sick. All right, we're gonna pull up the tracky pants. I'll go swimming if I have to to get this fish. Tracky pants are up. Yes! Look at the size of this thing. Booyah. Oh. Yeah, baby. Yes, 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 yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the, this is what I've been talking about. This is a silver ghost. Have a look at the size of this demon of a fish, man. Look at this thing, bro. It is a stonker. It just absolutely inhaled that piece of, um, that was actually on the fresh tailor. Oh, I reckon it come in because I was playing spy scales. Have a look at that. That is what it's all about. This is the exact fish why I came here. I did that massive drive, that big foil driving mission. Have a look at that fish. What an incredible specimen. That's beautiful, man. I love you. Thank you. One of the most enjoyable fish to catch just purely because you just sit in the car, you got tunes on, it's relaxing, and then your rod just goes boom. Have a look at him. Ah, uh -huh. stop it. That thing's beautiful. Ah. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so this is a beautiful fish. I'm actually going to keep this fish because I've got a couple of feet people to feed on the way back down to Perth. We're going to do a couple of fish deliveries. And in the morning, I want to show you something very special about these beautiful fish. So um, don't worry, by the way, guys. I've already put him to sleep. It's completely dead. It does not feel anything right now. So I've been getting hounded by people for hurting fish but for some reason look I'm not hurting it it's dead but there you go that is a beautiful beautiful specimen of a fish and um, 
I'm absolutely frothing right now. Have a look at him. Oh, have a look at that. What a beautiful beast. All right, I'm gonna bleed him, get the blood out of his meat, and um, we're gonna be feeding a couple of families. Oh, I'm gonna watch that other rod, eh? That other rod will probably go off now. There we go. And that is the exact reason why I do it. Oh, beautiful fish. Love you, baby. All right, what we need to do now is get up here. I'm gonna climb on top of the car. Ay, this, and get this down. I don't know how many people travel with a bloody ironing board, but I do because this is one of the best filleting tables known to mankind. Look at that, mate. See ya. Right, right, let's fill this fish up. Oy. Wait. All right, here we go. It is time to rip off a couple of big juicy slabs off this incredible fish that we caught. So it did, it took, it took us the whole entire, whole entire day to drive down the coast, find the spot I wanted to fish. There are some incredible spots way, way up the coast there, but the seaweed and the wind and everything was bad. So we made a good decision by coming here. Here it is, I'll give you one more look at her. Beautiful, beautiful specimen. It's a lovely fish. It's actually not that big, really. It's like it's just about as big as a chopping board, as an ironing board. But these things, like we catch big, big ones out here usually. But this is actually not a bad size eating one. And um, like I said, there's a couple of families to feed on the way back down. So um, what I'm going to do is just start ripping some fillets off this bad boy. I'm going to get a fair bit of meat off this one. That's very important if you're ever going to keep a fish like this, or any fish in general. As soon as you catch it, you kill it and you bleed it straight away. So this thing's been hanging upside down, head down, tail up over there in a sand dune for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. I've packed up all my fishing rods, I've packed everything up, I don't need to get any more fish. I only come for one, and we've got this is mission complete, so we're pretty, pretty happy about it. Look at this, feel it man. That's one, look at the size of that fillet, boy. That's one big juicy fillet of fish right there. It's like a mirror, you can just do your makeup on that thing, it's incredibly shiny, eh, hey? look at it. But that is one big fillet of fish. Slap that over there, Whoosh. and we'll um, knock a fillet off the other side. So that is the second fillet. Another big, look at the size of that thing, man. That is just all meat. The whole entire thing there is edible, except for that skin, which we're gonna take off now, but that is bloody beautiful. A lot of people don't like eating mulloway, but I reckon they're pretty bloody good. If you bleed it straight away, like you can see in that meat there that there's not a lot of blood. So if you bleed it straight away, they're quite a nice fish to eat. And this is what we're left with the big soggy carcass but we are going to do something very interesting with this in the morning so I'm just going to chuck that down there and in the morning I'm going to show you guys something very bloody interesting about that carcass it's pretty dope all right let's get the skin off this fish look at this big beautiful shiny piece man you could make like a you can make like a wallet out of that piece of skin but we don't need that we have <laughs> dude there's so much fish there's like half a chopping board full of fish there. And then behind you guys where the camera is, there is just copious amounts of sandwich bags full of fish meat. Look, they just keep going. There's a whole pile of them there. So a couple of people are gonna get fed on the way back. Beautiful fish to like make curries with, all that kind of stuff. It's like a, yeah, curry is like something that I use my life for. But anyway, this is what I'm doing for the next 10 minutes, bagging up fish, 
Probably I'm going to pack up everything here. It's absolutely blowing a gale. That's why I've moved the car this way. So probably try to, um, oh, my torch just went flat. That's a sign to go to bed. So I'm just going to bag up the rest of this fish, bang it in the freezer in the back of the car, and then I'm going to crawl in the back of the car myself, get into my nice warm little swag, and I'm going to sleep, man. What an epic bloody day. Mission complete. We got the fish we come for, and um, what a bloody good day. And it's not even over yet. We've got all day tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Coffee. We'll go through that fish's head, and it's going to be a bloody good time. See you later, doggies. Good night and much love. Ow! cold this morning good bloody morning to you i hope you guys are absolutely wonderful Woo, it's cold beautiful sleep last night just going to bed with the sound of waves you just can't beat that sleeping in the back of the troopy there got the swag in the back it's so good and it's even better going to sleep knowing that you completed a mission that you came to do so we've got this beautiful mulloway carcass sitting on the beach here I'm lucky that crabs and bloody birds didn't take it away last night. There are little crab footprints all around us. They've been having a feed too, which is good. We are feeding the food chain. And um, look, it is exactly, it's exactly six o'clock. So you know what time it is? It is barista sessions time. And then we're gonna mine through this beautiful fish's head. I'm gonna show you guys something pretty cool that's inside that fish. And it is a beautiful morning. Look at that, that sun. Just starting to pop its head up over there. We've got about a 10 to 7 knot southwest wind, so again, today the winds are going to be haggard, but who knows where we're going to go today. We're just going to explore again. But uh, it is coffee time. Oh, what a bloody good sleep. I probably look like a bashed up avocado right now, so excuse me, but um, just woke up, doggies. Ha. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Let's go. Hey, coffee! Coffee time! That cup is rank. One of my mates was drinking red wine out of it the other day. Ha! Anyway, let's go. So we're not even going to start a fire. First time in a long time we haven't had a fire. It's all good. Crank this thing up. The jet boil. Always gets the job done. Oh, felt weird fishing last night without a fire, but it is what it is, you know? Oh, there we go. And I've had no dinner, had no food yesterday. Pretty hungry, we should, we should cook up some mulloway, except I'm an idiot and I put it straight, all of that fish went in the freezer last night, so now I'm gonna have to defrost it. A couple of snags in the fridge. Maybe I'll cook them up later for lunch. All right, that'll, that'll take one minute. Fill her up, fill her up. Oh, that smells really good. That smells hella good. All right, so while this coffee sits here and brews, we're going to, um, oh, I'm actually going to disassemble that fish frame. So I'm going to pull the fish frame apart. Um, I'm also going to cut open its stomach and see what it's been eating because that's something that hell interests me is to see what the fish eat. So next time you come down here, you see what's baits in its stomach, you see what they're eating in their natural habitat. And then that's to try to bait, I try to target for next time I'm going to catch these fish. So every time I catch one, I open up its stomach and just have a little look. So. Let's do a bit of investigation while this coffee brews. Oh, that good's coffee, eh? All right, 
Now that we've got a coffee in our hand, here's the fish frame down here. I've pulled it apart while you guys were, um, or while this coffee was brewing, should I say. And this is how we're looking right now. So here's the beautiful fish all being separated and pulled apart. This here is its stomach, and that is in what was inside its stomach. So that's the fish's tail. Obviously its head, it's fully decomposing in there, but can't really tell what sort of fish that is. But um, that whole entire fish was in that fish's stomach. So all of this here, I'm just gonna disregard. I don't need that. What I need is this up here. All right, so to complete an operation like this, you're gonna need three things. You're gonna need a pair of pliers, you're gonna need a big ass butcher's knife, and then you're gonna you need like a nice little tiny little picking knife. So what we're gonna do here is inside this fish, there's two things called jewels. And it's like a fisherman's trophy if you can get them out. So right behind the back of its eye, about, I don't know, 25, 30 mil behind the back of its eye there, there's this pocket. And see that pocket there, that white bony pocket? Inside that pocket holds the fisherman's jewels. There we go, see how that turned into like juice? It went all juicy. You get your little picker knife, get rid of the bone, and then you see in here there's a sack. So inside this sack, it holds something very valuable. This thing here, right? That thing usually holds the jewels in it, but because I've just butchered it, there are no jewels in it. So that means they're floating around. Oh, I can see it. This is like treasure hunting, man. I can actually see it. That's epic. All right, here's one. Yes, look at this. That is what we've come for. See that there? That is a jewel, a Molloway jewel. It's like gold, man. It's better than gold. It's more valuable than oil. Look at that thing. There's one more. I'll get the other one out. All right, after some extensive digging and um, searching, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get this one. And there he is. All right, there we go. We've got both of them out. Have a look at this. That is just incredible. So that's what you get out of the fish's head. It's two jewels. Like I said, it's more valuable than oil, more valuable than bloody gold. Epic, epic little pieces. So the, in, back in the day, these used to be good luck for fishermen. I've been told like heaps of yarns from the local guys around here who are really old. They used to take them out, put them on a necklace, and it was their um, good luck fishing charms for the next time they went fishing, but they're pretty amazing. How sick is that? We got two little trophies out of that beautiful fish last night. So that's how big they are. It's a beautiful little, it all, almost looks like a pearl, but they're a very odd shaped little piece of bone. I'm pretty sure it's bone, but they are extremely hard. So what I've done with these before, when I very first met Mac 10, I brought her to Australia. If you don't know who Mac 10 is, that's my girlfriend. I brought her down here to Australia and we um, went Mulloway fishing and she caught her first ever Mulloway. It was only a, a pup. I think it was like 100 mil oversized. So we kept it. I got the jewels out of that fish and I turned it into a ring for her. So she's actually got one of these Mulloway jewels in a ring like this on her finger and she's had it for nearly four years or four and a half years or something like that. And um, it is still going strong to this day. So I'll try to I'll try I'll try see if I can get a video of that ring and I'll show you. But you can make necklaces out of these. You can make rings, which I did. You can do a whole lot of stuff. But I usually just chuck them in a little bag, and I've got a bag full of these in the car. And um, they're me good luck charms, mate. Look at that. Epic. Mwah. Have a go at this. How bloody good is this? Ha! Ah! And it's free. It doesn't cost anything to come out here and do this stuff. I was just thinking to myself, that's four Mulloway missions I've done, and each one I've got a Mulloway. So let's see if I can push it five from five. It's four back to back. Every time I've come, I've got one. So let's see if we can make it five in another video. But um, look, that was a super, super fun little mission. Yesterday we found some untouched places, which I've never been before. And I think there's some incredible fishing spots north of here. We just gotta wait for that weed to get out of there. And um, look, we came, we saw, and we conquered. All I wanted to do was explore some new places, catch that fish that's down there on the ground, and we have absolutely ticked all of the boxes. So I am absolutely frothing right now. 
I've got a big day ahead of me. I've got some fish deliveries to do. We've got to go and um, give that troopy a big squeaky clean because I was driving through salt flats and just stuff that just gives me a headache. But anyway, look, I want to thank you guys so bloody much for watching. And um, I want to thank you for all the support as well. You're a bunch of legends. I bloody love yous. And I'll see you in the next video on the next adventure. Thanks for all the support. Love yous. And I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, doggies. Ow! All right, here we go. It is the day after. We're sitting in the back of the troop here again. I did a couple of fish deliveries on the way home yesterday, so there's some happy people with some beautiful fresh Mulloway fillets. Hopefully they're gonna cook them up tonight. But I wanted to show you guys that ring I made out of the Mulloway jewels. So these are the two Mulloway jewels that we got yesterday. Beautiful little specimens there. Like I said, it's li literally more valuable than gold, more valuable than anything in the world. But what I did, I told you guys I'd show you that ring I made. Here's that ring I made for Mucky. So that is an epic little Mulloway jewel ring which I made. Made this thing four years ago and it's still going strong. So that's the little Mulloway jewel there, that little white thing you can see. That's the jewel there. And you can see the fish we got yesterday, the size difference of that jewel. So this fish here was only just size, I think it, went about, it was 100 mil oversize. So it was a size, just a size fish. And then the one we got last night would have been around 10, maybe 10, 11, 12 kilo-ish. So there's the two jewels out of that one, and I can make some pretty bloody cool stuff out of those. So um, there you go. If you ever catch a Mulloway and you want to keep it, make sure you get the jewels out. It's a pretty cool little thing. But remember, only keep what you need. And if you don't need them, let the big beautiful things go because they're an incredible fish and um, they, they deserve to swim another day. But there you go. You can make jewelry out of those Mulloway jewels. Pretty epic. Righto, doggies. I'll see you in the next one. Much love. Oh.